So the sport of FPV has been around for a very long time, but I think it's recently increased in popularity. This has sparked the company DJI to produce not only one, but two new drones with the goal of making the barrier to FPV drones much easier to cross. But how easy exactly are these drones to use? I picked up the DJI Avada because I want to get into the space, but also to test this theory out. What's going on everyone? My name is Joel, I'm a videographer, and I want to expand my skills into the FPV niche. The reason is FPV is such a lucrative thing, not many people know how to do it, but the problem is I have no idea where to start, and I lack the ability to control or use an FPV drone. I don't want to get into the technical aspect of it, but I'd rather just buy a product that already exists. So for those of you who do not know, traditional drones have become so easy that virtually anyone can pick up a controller and learn how to fly these drones in a few minutes. Let me get a drone actually. With your typical drone, there are three axes that you need to control. One is your pitch, one is your roll, one is your yaw. Think. In order to actually keep your drone in the air, you have to control all three of these points at the same time. Nowadays, a computer inside the drones control most of that aspect. If you're getting one that's created by a company like DJI, the only things you're worrying about is how high up you want the drone, and then if you want to move forwards or backwards or side to side. Pretty basic and pretty simple. Now, FPV drones take that part away. So you have to control all three axes, but the thing is you can make these really cool tight turns and maneuvers that you can't do on a traditional drone. And that's the appeal of using an FPV drone over using a regular drone. I think it's easier to imagine it like flying a paper airplane because airplanes can make turns and twists and maneuvers. Speaking of planes, we're playing over my head right now. So in order to not crash your drone immediately after you get it, you need to practice using something like a simulator that can simulate the experience of flying an FPV drone. The simulator I chose to practice with is one called Liftoff. It's one you can get on Steam and it was the only one that worked with a Mac. Liftoff has a few DLCs, but I only added two. One which is free and adds the first FPV drone that DJI created. And the other one includes a bunch of vehicles and stuff that kind of like are in the same space that you're flying in. In total, I spent around $25 for this, but I think the investment is extremely small and comparison to what I will be able to do with this drone given you know the simulator that I can practice with. Now in total I spent around 117 hours according to Steam practicing on this simulator but I actually had to relearn how to fly the drone at one point. More on that later but just know that half of my time was trying to actually relearn how to fly the drone. Originally I started out by using my Xbox controller that I can connect through Bluetooth to the computer and that was pretty cool but it's not the same as when you connect the actual FPV controller to your computer. I think there's a higher level of precision with the Avada controller because the sticks are actually raised in comparison to the ones on the Xbox controller and that gives you a lot more control when you're flying this very very precise thing. In my situation the simulator was extremely smooth and fluid. It could be because I have a very high-end laptop. I really had no problems flying it. It's a very fun game to play and I just play it basically every day if I have some free time. With that being said after all of this process I would say that I am okay at flying an FPV drone. I'm definitely 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 not the best but you don't have to be the best to start. So with this information, I was ready to finally start to fly. So before I get into the actual flight, I want to start off with the equipment that I actually bought from DJI. I went with the DJI Pro View combo and added the Fly More kit so I could get extra batteries. I also bought the actual controller because I'll probably never use the stick controller they came with since you can't use it to fly in manual mode anyways. I guess this thing is tailored for beginners, but in my opinion, it takes out the manual mode completely, so I don't really understand why you'd want to use this if you want the full FPV feel and experience. So I'm never gonna use this thing. Also, to enable manual mode with the FPV remote, you need to physically tighten your controller's throttle so it doesn't move around. I'm not sure what the reason is they do this, but you actually need a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Okay, I have to look this up. You have to tighten the, the lift the panel off in the back, tighten the, the screws, and then you can't flick the controller. It's like very rigid and stiff. Now, during my actual flight, I did a few things wrong right out the gate. First, I didn't check my flight map. So I went to a park that was pretty close to me. Thought that I'd be fine. I was not fine. I had to relocate. I lived near like two airports, so there was like a cross section in between that I could finally fly in and once I finally got there and everything was like set up pretty nice I realized I didn't have a fast enough SD card for the drone to write the footage on to the SD card you can't cheap out with your SD card so the footage from the first flight is is kind of ruined but I still took some things away from it. First of all, flying is extremely similar to the simulator. So I felt very, very comfortable, even though I was super nervous when I started out. After you get a feel of it, you realize, oh, this is not too bad, which is reassuring. Second thing is like flying is extremely loud. This drone is not quiet in any way at all. You will draw attention to yourself. I had someone come over to me who was like a groundskeeper at the park and he told me like, I had to not fly so low, whatever, whatever. But he found me quickly because it's so loud. You're gonna be a, a local attraction for a little bit when you fly the drone around. Next 
missing is being able to switch modes with the FPV drone is super useful. When I was taking off and landing, I wasn't in manual mode, I was in normal mode, and then I would switch into manual mode when I felt like I was in a position that was safe enough to switch over. Overall, the flight went well. I did hit the ground one time, but I got right back up and I didn't hurt the drone at all because the guards are protected. So very reassuring and cool to see that the guards actually work to protect the drone. Now, because I didn't get good enough footage that first time, I went to the coast a week later and I got some actual good footage that I'm going to show you right here. With the correct SD card, the footage looks a lot clearer and sharper. Wind resistance on the coast was much stronger, so I could feel, physically feel it on the drone. I still felt like I was in control for the most part. It did drain the battery though a lot more because it was I was fighting against the wind for like a lot of it. And that's basically it. I didn't crash, which I feel like is pretty good. That means the simulator clearly prepared me for something. To get into the pros of the Avada drone, the guards on the propellers do work very well. So you don't really have to worry too much about destroying your expensive drone on something stupid. Also, DJI did a good job at making the drone simple enough to use where I don't have to worry about the technical aspects of using the drone. I really just put on the headset, link the controller to my phone. The drone is pretty much ready to go. I can focus more on just getting the shots I want. It's an emergency stop button too, which is really useful when you do lose control and you just need the drone to stop. Great feature. The battery life too is also good in relation to other FPV drones. Apparently other FPV drones only get like five minutes like max. This is more around, they claim 18. I think it's more around like 10 or 12. Either way, the extra batteries are really useful whenever you're filming because it's not much time regardless of if it's five minutes or 10 minutes. Now on to the cons, the things that I really, really, really wish didn't have to happen. The controls are not customizable. I, I don't know why DJI did this. I don't think it's a very hard issue to fix. DJI includes three modes that you can fly in. Most people fly in mode two, which is what I've learned to fly in now. But originally, one of the sticks that I used to control the pitch, I was flying inverted. And I thought that I'd be able to easily change my controls in the settings on DJI's app. No, you can't do it. Why? I don't get it. I was 50 hours into practicing on the simulator and I had to relearn how to fly, which is so annoying. It's insane to me that you can't change the controls. If you're going to use this drone, make sure you're using the same controls or starting off the same controls because you can change the controls in the simulator, but when you go on to the real drone, you can only you use one of their three presets, whatever. It can be very hard to find places to fly due to the restrictions that you have, which I understand why. I have the license. I understand there's an airport nearby. We don't want drones crashing into planes. Understandable. If I'm flying, let's say, in a house you know, nearby and I'm doing a home tour, if I'm in this enclosed area flying and I have my drone license so I understand what's going on, why is it that I need permission to fly in this specific area? Legally, there's no way around that. But if you had a custom built drone, you wouldn't have to follow those same rules because obviously it's not like the same way. Just saying. The next thing is that the 4K on the camera is really good, but I don't think it's the best. That's why people use GoPros and link them onto the Avada. That's a really good way to solve it because the Avada actually can lift the GoPro so you can attach one on and I have a rig coming in that I'm going to test out soon. There's workaways around it, but the camera on the Avada natively is not the best in my opinion. Next thing is that the package does not come with the controller as a separate bundle. And I, again, I can't understand this because manual mode on an FPV drone is in my opinion, 50 or 60, 70% of the reason why you buy an FPV drone. So you can make these really cool turns and you have much more control over the drone overall. So you have to buy this separately. Why is it that they don't include this in a separate package, but you can't even use manual mode on this so DJI please just make the package so we can get that controller in one thing and the last thing is it's kind of expensive but I think it makes a little bit of sense when I consider the amount of hassle they take away from my day-to-day -day life by setting up all the stuff for me I think it's worth it but it is expensive now some tips if you're considering buying this FPV drone firstly again make sure you have the right SD cards I'll leave the correct SD card that I used in the description I would also enable the crosshairs while flying in both the simulator and the actual drone this helps me a lot by keeping me in line with what it is I'm looking for so I can tell when I'm moving side to side or if I'm moving up and down, helps out a lot. Next one, I cannot stress this one enough. Please change your settings to the one of the three modes that DJI offers when you're flying or else you're gonna have to relearn and that is not a fun time at all. Lastly, I would say get ND filters if you're planning on flying in the daytime. Now, normally I would say you should fly either sunrise or sunset because of just how nice the light looks. But if you wanna fly in the day, make sure you grab some ND filters so your footage is not overexposed. And that's really it guys. So the DJI Avada is a great drone in my opinion. I can't wait to get some more footage. If you guys would like to see the journey that I'm taking with FPV content, you can follow me right over here on my FPV account. Subscribe to the channel if you guys like this type of content. I'm excited to see you guys in the next video, whatever that video might be.